them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout. The Gospel of the Lord. One who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We will now do the blessing of the palms. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through your Savior Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed the Messiah and King by those who spread their garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So now I invite those who want to 
parade around with our palms to join me in doing that. God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our psalm will be read responsively, Psalm 31. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. My life is wasted with grief, and my ears are sighing. My strength fails me because of the shame, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of my enemies and disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around, and they put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me from your steadfast love. We're now moving into the passion of our story from Palm Sunday into the rest of the week. We do this because this is our story. In his journey through betrayal, desertion, and execution, Jesus bears witness through faithfulness in serving God's justice among the sick, poor, and outcast, that God's justice on earth is love. Imperial powers throughout that crucifixion would discredit Jesus' faithfulness to God, God's justice on earth. Instead, through the resurrection, God vindicates Jesus' faithfulness, and Jesus' disciples are empowered to take up Jesus' faithfulness to God's justice. Steadfast faithfulness to God's justice on earth is not for the weak-willed or for those who put their trust in the powers of wealth, social status, or nation. Jesus' faithfulness shows the way and is the way to be strong, to love and trust in God. Without this story, nothing else in the Christian story matters. It is a painful story. But without this painful story, the story, the joy of the resurrection simply isn't there. So listen carefully. This is the story of Jesus' journey to the cross, as it is told in the Gospel of Luke. This is our story. Please join me in telling it, as indicated in your order of service. This is our story. This is our story. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. 
So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, He said to them, Listen, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let's share God's peace with one another. And please stand as we sing, I love to tell the story. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body of Christ, in whose name we pray. When the hour came, he took his place at the table with the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat until it's fulfilled 
in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after, saying, this cup is poured out for you. It is the new covenant in my blood. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table. Feast on God's abundant life for you. I invite you now to take out your communion elements. And may the body of Christ be given for you. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. After supper, Jesus said, But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another, which of them it could be? Who would do this? A dispute also rose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among, I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift from all of you like wheat. But I have, I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to them, Lord, I'm going to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not grow this day until you have denied three times that you know him. He said to them, when I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, I have nothing. He said to them, But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy it. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, he replied, It is enough. He came and went out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached a place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, 
he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief, and said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come from him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your honor and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also lived there. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I did not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You are also one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophecy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When the day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together and they brought him to their council. They said, He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, Please stand as we sing together, O Sacred Head, Now Wounded.
seated. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been waiting to see him for a long time, because he heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some signs. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers threatened him with contempt and mocked him. He put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither was Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow, release the for us. This was the man who had been put into prison for insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I found him in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand shall be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never rest. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, but they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, There was also inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Condemnation. Condemnation. And we have, and 
and we indeed have been condemned just justly, for we are not for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when I come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, was a, who through a member of the council had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how the bo his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments on the Sabbath. They rested according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church, called to follow Jesus in the way of the cross. Make us unflinching servants of the gospel. Deliver us from the hardship as we confront the forces of injustice and practice radical compassion. Merciful God. For the earth and all its inhabitants created in love. Train us to recognize your divine goodness in the world around us. Rouse us in the perseverance for all creation, that we take a greater care of its resources. Merciful God, for those in positions of authority, called to lead with integrity and compassion, supply them with courage and vulnerability when challenged with new ideas. Deliver them from fear that limits imagination and impedes justice. Merciful God, for those who suffer, waiting expectantly for mercy and consolation, accompany those who feel abandoned or betrayed, defend those who are wrongly accused, and embrace those who are incarcerated or detained. Heal those who are ill, especially those we name out loud or in our hearts before you. Merciful God, for Christians around the world preparing this week to journey with Jesus to the cross, reveal to us once again the earth-shaking power of humble service, unmerited forgiveness, and sacrificial love. Lead us all from death to life. Merciful God, we remember those who have died, who were, comm who were commended into your hands, Remember us when you come into your kingdom and prepare a place for each of us with you in paradise. Merciful God. You are the children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness, strengthened for the journey ahead. And may Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Our final hymn is Lamb of God, found in your hymnal. 336. <laughs> 